All right, ladies and gentlemen, got another video coming here for you for your custom firmware PS3. Uh, this is for PS3s that are running a CEX or a DEX based custom firmware, uh, running the Rebug custom firmware. Uh, I'm currently running 4.65, but this will work all the way up to 4.82, uh, which I will be testing all of the firmwares up to date for this. This is basically taking your PS3 Slim and uh, non-backwards non compatible systems and making them backwards compatible. This will allow you to run PS2 ISOs and PSP ISOs. Uh, but in this video we're going to focus on PS2 ISOs because I think it's a little bit different for PSP ISOs so I will be making a video on PSP ISOs running on your PlayStation 3 custom firmware. Uh, but uh, until further notice, uh, we'll do the PS2 ones. So right here we have the Rebug Toolbox 20212. Uh, this is the latest version of the Rebug Toolbox. Uh, this is the full version of Rebug Toolbox. And uh, you will need Rebug Custom Firmware, either CEX or DEX, in order to install this and run it. Well, you can install it on any custom firmware, but you can't use the uh, certain principles of the program unless you have rebug so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in my USB stick here that I'm gonna use and uh, simply all I'm going to do now is just drag and copy this over to my USB drive allow that to copy over like so as you can see I have my rebug toolbox 2.0 2.12 package on the root of my USB and uh, other than that what we're gonna need to do is just go over to the PS3 now Okay, so here we are at the PS3 system. Now, like I said, you need to be on Rebug Custom Firmware in order to use this Rebug Toolbox. And uh, the Rebug Custom Firmware also needs to have Cobra 7 or higher installed on it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to come over here to my system settings and scroll down to my system information real quick. And you can see I have 4.66 custom firmware installed on my uh, PlayStation 3 here and this is a PS3 slim model so uh, basically what I'm going to do now is come over to my game section and go up to my package manager open up your package manager and go to install package files uh, you can go down to standard installation and it will read the package files on the root of that USB so what we have here is the Rebug Toolbox 2.02.12. Now I already have Rebug Toolbox installed. Uh, I actually have 0 0.2.10 uh, installed. But what I'm going to do before I install this new version of Rebug Toolbox, I'm just simply going to delete the old Rebug Toolbox just to ensure that there's no uh, formalities with... Um, installing the new version of it. So now I'm just going to come back up here to my package manager, install package files and standard installation, and I'm going to install the Rebug Toolbox 20212. So now that that's installed, what we can do is we can come back down here to my unknown folder and we'll see the new version of Rebug Toolbox installed here. And if I go to my information, you can see it's uh, 202 still, uh, so this is the version that I just installed, and we're just going to run this like so. Okay, so once you're inside your Rebug Toolbox, you can display your system information like so, and uh, we have 4.65 firmware version, and uh, it's a CEX, and we have Cobra 703 running on our uh, custom firmware PS3. So uh, what you can do is if you come over to here, you can see there's a few things you're going to have to do. And this is what you're going to have to, you're going to have to scroll over to selector in your rebug toolbox. System mode is going to be set to rebug. Make sure that it is set to rebug. XMB operation mode, that should be on debug already, hence the debug settings you have on your XMB. Debug menu type is CEXQA, which is going to be generic. It's going to be just like that when you load up. And then right here, toggle Cobra mode. Make sure this is enabled. Then toggle PS2 emulator. Make sure that says Cobra. 
and then also last but not least toggle webman and make sure webman is enabled once you've enabled all of those and you come over here and you go to quit it's going to automatically reboot your system alrighty so here we are back at the XMB of the PS3 so far so good so we have all these things enabled now if we come up to the top here after you reboot you should see this webman games if you open up the webman games you will see PlayStation 3, PlayStation 2, PlayStation, and PlayStation Portable. Now, we're not going to focus on PlayStation Portable just yet. We're going to be focusing on the PlayStation 2. Now, PlayStation 2 ISOs, there is a thing called a Q file. Now, I don't necessarily know if this Q file is needed or not, um, because it's not needed for PS1 games mounted from Multiman. But with the webman module, you do need a Q file for it to show up here. So for an example, I have this, uh, well, this right here is Midnight Club 3 Dub Edition. Uh, I haven't renamed it yet, but uh, this is the ISO. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up my multi-man real quick for you. And we're going to scroll to the root directory. Okay, so here we have Multiman loaded up, and uh, this right here is the root wall here. I'll show you how to get to that real quick. So this is going to be your main screen of Multiman. If you come over all the way to the left-hand side, you're going to see your file manager, MOS. So if you click on that, it loads up this page, and if this screen isn't here, then all you're going to do is select PS3 root, and it's going to open up this file this folder here and then just select HDD0 so double click on that now you have the PS2 ISO folder this is where your PS2 ISOs are going to go now I ripped an ISO off of a disk I already had and it created this Q file automatically and this is the actual game right here now I don't necessarily know if the Q is needed or not again I will find that out in the future uh, if you do need a Q file, um, well, let's see, what can I, I mean, I guess I could potentially open it. Let's see if we open this in hex viewer, see what happens. Okay, so there's just the whole, you, you could potentially make a Q file, it's just, you have to, run the codes correctly and make it yourself on how you need it to be um, but we'll worry about that later so first and foremost like you copy an ISO over to your PS3 uh, using multi-man so and how do you do that well you pop the disk in and the disk is going to show up right here right before this refresh and you just hit triangle and say create ISO it will create the ISO to the actual root uh, the HDD0 of this folder here the dev hdd0 ps2 iso this is where it will create the folders so once you've done that what you can do is you can either a double click on the iso here and mount it which i'm going to do right now just simply because it's easier <clears throat> okay back to the xmb now, like I said in Multiman, you could just double click the ISO and mount it right then and there. As you can see, I mounted the PlayStation 2 format disk ISO using that ISO directly. But with the Webman games, you can also come down here to your PlayStation 2 and select the ISO here as well. So now that it's already selected, the only thing we have to do now is test it and see if it runs. So let's give it a shot. And there you go. You have PlayStation 2 games running on your non-backwards compatible PlayStation 3. So, rate, comment, and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys later. I hope you enjoy this little video on how to run backwards compatible, uh, well, or make your PS3 backwards compatible with PlayStation 2. I will be coming out with a video for PSP as well. 
And uh, that's pretty much it. So the link for the Rebug Toolbox will be down in the description below. I just released two Rebug videos for firmware that you can try this out with for yourself. And uh, if you have any PS2 discs, go ahead and uh, make some ISOs with them on your system. And uh, I will also be making videos on how to get ISOs uh, made via not using the PS3 and creating your own Q files so you can load them through Webman as well. So thanks for the support, guys, and I'll talk to you later.